Good morning, family. God is good. Four years ago, I had played professional baseball 10 years. I got hooked on amphetamine at the end of my baseball career. And then seven years after my baseball career, I was a homeless, junkie, needle IV user, meth heroin addict, committing crime. And I caught a felony at 37 years old. I came to the Salvation Army. I turned my life over to God. I made every decision leading towards the Lord. And he's shown favor in my life. And I'm so blessed. It's an absolute miracle that I'm able to come up here and I'm able to share my story with you guys. But I want to read this from the Bible. I want to share a little bit about God's favor. And then we're going to go into a lesson about Abraham and Isaac and about the crippled beggar. And then we'll pray it in after this. All right. It says, it's uh, Proverbs 8, 35. Now understand that Proverbs, there's been people that have created billion dollar businesses by going off the Proverbs. This is absolutely amazing, amazing wisdom when you surrender to the Lord and Proverbs can change your whole entire life because it gives you guidance, it gives you wisdom on how we're supposed to live our lives. But it says, it says, for whoever finds me finds life and receives favor from the Lord. But those who miss me injure themselves. All right, guys, so this lets me know right here, for me in the Salvation Army, my morning routine was the biggest thing that I could ever have learned. I learned it during the Sally and I continue to do the same thing every single morning, guys. I wake up at four in the morning, right, and I pray, right? I pause. As I sit up in my life, I pause and I reflect on where the Lord has taken me from. This fills my vessel with gratitude, right? I'm super thankful for where God has taken me from, right? Because right when we wake up, like I like to share, the devil's gonna come at you with earthly pleasures and earthly problems, right? So we pause, we reflect, right? And then we ask the Lord to use your vessels, right? We don't want to ask the Lord to receive things. We want him to use you, right? We want, we want him to use your hands, your feet, and your mouth for the glory of God. We want to be used. We want the blessings to run through us to help others. And that's where we feel like we have a sense of purpose now when we're in our life, right? And then we say, Lord, your will and the strength to carry it out. Like I said, the universe does not care about your past, all right? The universe rewards courage. The universe rewards bravery. Stepping outside every day of your comfort zone is an absolute massive big deal. And for me, 37 years not walking with God, right? Having no favor in my life, being constantly frustrated, constantly knocking my head, always feeling unfulfilled, but from a worldly standpoint, oh, Monty's the man, Monty plays ball, he's got this, that, and this, he's got everything that you would ever want. But on a spiritual standpoint, I was empty chasing pleasures every single day, but every decision that I made at that point is I leaned away from God, right? Every decision I was leaning away from the Lord. How am I supposed to receive God's favor if I'm continuing to lean away from the Lord? So what I've done now is after my morning routine, I wake up and all my decisions that I make, I now lean towards God. I lean towards the Lord and all my decisions and I have this amazing life now beyond, I mean, I have peace beyond my understanding. I have this amazing purpose to share the good news. And dude, four years ago, I was a red lanyard hanging clothes in the warehouse every single day, just four years ago. But this morning routine that I can take with me anywhere on the earth and this leaning into God and all my decisions has shown favor in my life. And I'm so thankful for that because I used to wake up and I used to wonder like, what am I gonna do? What do I do now? How can I get high? How can I get this? Can I put a needle in my arm just to be the person I hate? Now I wake up, I thank the Lord, and I say, let's go, baby! Oh. <laughs> and let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for everything that you do. Father, we love you. We thank you for your, uh, your, your forgiveness. We thank you for your gifts. We thank you for your favor. We thank you for your guidance. We thank you for the Proverbs. Father, we just, we're full of gratitude right now. We thank you, Lord, to be able to come to this place and start to put you first in our lives and just have that transformation power. We're super thankful that we're allowed to blow our lives over and over again and you start to give us favor as we start to lean towards you and we're so thankful that the next thing you know we have a transformed life and we understand life backwards but we live life forward. We start to look back in our lives and we see how the Lord has had his hand on us the whole entire time and our whole world starts to make sense. We thank you Lord if you're creating a miracle on the outside of this program as we continue to become a man of integrity as we 
stepped outside on graduation day. Now we're able to handle the blessing. Now we're the father we always needed. Now we're the person we always needed. Now we're assets on the planet. We're not liabilities no more. We're just thankful, Father, that you've shown favor on us and so many people in the world, Father. Sometimes we wonder, how could you be worried about us? But the thing is, Lord, that you're omnipresent, that you're everywhere and anywhere, Father. And we're so thankful for that as we continue to put you first every day, as we fill ourselves up with gratitude, and we continue to be thankful as we have the joy in the morning, and we just love you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen, Amen guys. I can fire up a prayer. So, anyhow, I want to share stories. So what happened for me is I started hearing the stories in the Bible. They started relating to my life, all right? I never could understand the Bible in my life. I did not want, I didn't want, not want anything to do with it. I used to walk in the locker room, see the guys doing Bible study. I used to say, miss me with that. You're naive. You know nothing. I used to think like that. But I've had this amazing transformation because the evidence and the proof that I have seen in my life, family. But there's a story of Abraham and Isaac, right? Abraham had not shown trust in the Lord in a couple situations. And the Lord was kind of upset with him, right? Because he didn't show his faith that he needed to show. Because we live by faith, family. We don't always understand what's going on in our lives. But through faith, through faith with works, we continue to become assets. And then we become the blessing as we become a man of integrity. And that's the true joy that we get on the planet. But he was told, he told Abraham to go up to the top of the mountain. And he said to sacrifice your son, right? What's Abraham thinking? He's like, what do you mean? Go sacrifice my son. That's crazy, right? What do you think the son's thinking? So they wake him up in the morning, right? They start to march up this mountain, right? Which eventually Abraham called the mountain that provides, right? God provides. That's what he named this mountain. As he's going up the mountain, right? God sent a ram on the other side, right? They have no idea that there's this ram walking up the mountain at the same time that he's walking up the mountain, all right? They get to the top of the mountain. Now the son's probably freaking out. Oh, dad, what are you doing, man? You know, what are you doing? So Abraham lays him on the altar or what to sacrifice him. And right when he's about to bring the sword down, all of a sudden this ram, boom, pops up on the other side of the mountain, the true sacrifice. And God provides in faith, family. And how I relate this in my story and how I can believe I can relate this to you guys, I've been praying on it, is when you're sitting here in the Salvation Army, sometimes we can start to worry what life is going on outside of here. Like what's going on outside of here? Is our family this, that? We start to worry about things outside of this place. And the thing is, is what this story teaches me, if we continue to walk in faith and continue to transform every single day, when you step outside of here, God's going to have something come into your life and you're going to intersect with it and you're going to be able to handle the blessing. How I look at this in my life, and I'm going to share you guys a five-minute clip of my podcast because I talk about it so you guys can actually see what I'm actually talking about. But I surrendered to God in jail and I got three months in the county, right? And I accepted everything that had happened. I finally surrendered. And like I said, when I'm doing this, I'm not understanding what's going on. But now four years clean and sober, I look back and it all makes sense because we live life forward, but we understand life backwards. So when I look back, it's like, oh wow, that's that mustard seed they were talking about. I accepted God in my heart. I started to make decisions leaning towards God. I got sentenced to the Salvation Army. The judge told me, you're going to do 365 days. She said, good luck. I had no idea what the Salvation Army was. I thought it was a thrift store that I used to steal from in my addiction. I had no idea. But I do know that when I was in jail, that people were always talking about it. Either the guy that had got the program and he ended up messing up, now he was going to prison, and he would be telling me, don't screw up that opportunity. Make sure you stay there because the judge will, judge will not show favor on you. Or it was the person that was the junkie that had did not want to go to prison, and it was an opportunity to not go to prison. So for me, once I surrendered, the word Salvation Army started popping up in my life. I ended up getting sentenced there. I ended up coming there to the Salvation Army in San Bernardino. I don't know if you guys know about San Bernardino, but you walk outside, you shake a bush, a needle pops out. You know what I'm saying? It's an absolute, there's a bad area right there. You know, sort of like how downtown San Diego used to be for you guys. You know what I mean? But for me, as I continued to walk with God, there was a guy named Hank and Charles. I don't even know who these dudes are at all. They decide, Hank's in a rehab called Genesis. He decides that everybody in recovery is on their phones. He decides that he wants to start a podcast, right? 
in San Diego. I'm in San Bernardino. I don't even know this dude. It's kind of like, that's the ram. I'm walking up the mountain. That's the ram. I'm walking up the mountain. And all of a sudden, God's going to provide something in my life as I intersect and I'm able to handle the blessing. So I end up graduating the program. I end up on a leap of faith coming down here. I end up walking into the, pro the program director's office, Carmelita. I said, I want a job here. At this time, guys, I had no front tooth. I mean, I lost my tooth at the end of my addiction. Like, like I mean, I'm, a, I'm an empty shell. I still got a year clean, but I still haven't become the person that I am yet. But because she said she's never had somebody come down here like that, she hit Captain Paul up. Captain Paul offered me a job as the third key. I moved down here on a leap of faith. By I'm making this decision from leaving San Bernardino. I now met my wife down here, who's a graduate from the Salvation Army San Diego, who we're going to be going to officer school in 2024. I mean, it's just amazing because I stepped outside my comfort zone and the universe said, I'm going to reward courage. I'm going to reward your courage because you stepped outside the comfort zone. I ended up getting outside of the program. So I've been 18 months within the Salvation Army bubble, right? I finally stepped out to go work at La Jolla Recovery. I used to wake up and do the devotion three times times a week down in San Diego right here, and that's how I, I love to share the message. I love to do what I'm doing. Right now, God's telling me this is why I saved you, son, when I'm sharing the message. I end up getting out there, and I want to spread the good news more. I'm like, man, I want to share the message. So I'm listening to a podcast, this guy, Wes Watson, and he's literally sitting there, and he goes, on the podcast, he goes, you want to start a YouTube channel? He goes, get up and make a video, man. Stop being a whip. Like, get up and let's go. And I'm like, okay. I go up to the park, I make my first video on my Hope the Other channel. Next thing you know, I start getting subscribers, I'm making videos every day, I get up over a thousand subscribers, and then this guy sees me, Hank, who created this whole podcast, built this whole amazing studio. He sees me at a meeting, he talks to me, he goes, Monty, he goes, hey, can you come and visit us at the studio? And then they offer me the opportunity to be the host. But because I stayed connected with God and I've done the next right thing and I've leaned towards him in every decision, the proof, the evidence is there. So I'm going to continue to walk with God and nobody can tell me any different. 37 years old, I hated God. No, nothing to do with him. Nothing to do with him. And all of a sudden, I'm homeless junkie in a tent, right? And now I'm putting God first. And now I have my own apartment, married, family, podcast, YouTube channel, going to be a pastor for the Salvation Army. It just blows me away from the evidence is right here in your life. And what I'm saying is life is like a raindrop in a thunderstorm, guys. Dude, this was four years ago. This has flown by. This program is six months long, and the success rate is 30 to 6% if you graduate. If you go to the Bridge House, it's 56%. If you stay connected, it's 86% chance of staying clean and sober for your whole entire life. The last thing I want to share before we show my video is that there's another story in the Bible that I relate to. There's a crippled beggar, right? His whole life, he's been outside the temple stairs, the simple steps. He's continued to beg for money, beg for money, beg for money. That's all he's ever done his whole life, right? Peter and John see him from a distance. They walk up over to him, right? And he puts his, he puts his little cup out. He goes, hey, can I get, a, can I get some money? And, he, and then Peter goes, man, I got something better for you. I got Jesus Christ. I got the king of kings. And he goes, stand up. The beggar looks at him like they're crazy. He goes, stand up. The beggar gets up. He starts to walk. He can't believe he's moving his legs. He's like, he can't believe it, right? He starts to jump for joy. He cannot believe what has just happened in his life. So he goes and he runs through the temple, right? He runs through the temple. Everybody in the temple knows he's a crippled beggar. Nobody can believe that this guy is now running, but this is what the Lord wants to do. He wants to shine through your vessel so other people can see the power and that they're going to come to the kingdom. The day that you graduate from this program, everybody knows that you're a junkie. Everybody knows that you're an alcoholic. Everybody knows that you suffer and you have failed over and over again. So when you get out of here, what the Lord wants to do, and he is seeking for vessels to do this in. He wants to shine through your vessel. So when people see you and they're like, oh my gosh, that used to be Monty, that junkie that played pro ball and became homeless. And now look at him. He wants to shine through your vessel to bring others to the kingdom. Let's give the Lord a hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for that, guys. Hey, if you have not accepted the Lord yet in your heart,
heart, just a mustard seed, right? Just a mustard seed. You don't even got to tell nobody, right? Like I said, I accepted the Lord on a jail cell floor on my side in my orange room to go to a dorm. I didn't tell nobody. But as I look back, I understand that that was the moment that I did it. Just accept the Lord right now in your heart. If you walked away from God, if you want to come back to the Lord, man, the Lord loves you. He wants you to come back. He's deliberately seeking diligently for you to walk with him. He wants you his whole life. The thing is that we have free will, so it's a choice. It's a free choice. If you choose to lean away, you will lean away your whole entire life, and you will reap what you sow. If you lean towards, you will reap what you sow. It's the laws of the land. It's karma, baby. So bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for everything that you do, Father. If these gentlemen have walked away from you, Lord, and they want to come back and say, hey, hey, Lord, I, I want to come back, man. I'm lost. I'm wondering. I have no purpose. Thank you for that. Continue to bless them, man. If, if some of them want to go back out there and get more experience, protect them. Put a hedge of protection over them. They're spitting all out there. It's killing people like crazy. You know, make sure, Father, they stay alive so they can have another shot. Because you give chances. You're a God of second, third, fifth, twenty chances. That's who you are, Lord. And we're so thankful for that. Like, I should be dead. And I'm thankful that I can just come up here and share the message. If you have not received Jesus Christ, in your life, just put God first right now and say, Lord, come into my life. Your duty was to come down and die on the cross, to bridge the gap so we can have this amazing relationship, Lord. We thank you for your forgiveness, your love, your sufficient grace, Father, that no matter how many mistakes we make, we have the grace to be forgiven no matter what. We love you, Lord, for that. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen, guys. Amen. Thank you, guys. So, hey, this is, uh, this is episode 10 of my podcast. Uh, uh, I just wanted to show you guys.